Hi everyone, I'm doing something very different in my Tesla. I am road tripping. Well, if you follow my channel, you know that I road trip all the time, but this one is different because I am going from Iowa to Colorado about 800 miles and I'm gonna be hauling one of these behind the car, a U-Haul. And frankly, I'm not exactly sure how it's gonna go. So grab a bucket of popcorn and come along for the ride and see the good, the bad, and hopefully not the ugly. So. Let's figure out how this is gonna work. So I'm planning this trip, I used a better route planner. And if you don't know what that is, it is a website that's like Google Maps, but it's generally specifically designed for EVs. And it does a really good job of calculating efficiencies and stops just very similar to what it's like to do it inside the Tesla itself. So in plugging into a better route planner at 450, it looks like it's doable. At 500, it's uh, okay, but at 600, if I have I happen to be pulling 600 for some reason, I'm gonna be in trouble. Um, and I may have to resort to stopping at some CCS chargers or doing some other type of charging. So I really don't know how this is gonna go. Um, I honestly don't know how to back up with a trailer. I'm gonna have to figure that out. Hopefully I won't have to back up very much. Obviously, when you're charging in a supercharger, the charger is in the back and you can't back in with a trailer to a supercharger. So am I going to have to disconnect the trailer at every single stop or am I going to be able to somehow pull in and finagle a way in? Or maybe some of these chargers have a pull in slot. I know a couple of them do, but most of them do not. So let's get the car. Let's get the trailer. Get it loaded up and get on the road and figure out what we're gonna do. So we just picked up our trailer on our 800 mile trip out to Colorado. And as I said earlier, we're not exactly sure how this is gonna go. The guy helped us out getting the trailer located. First time he's ever put a U-Haul trailer on a Tesla. What is this? It's a Tesla. Oh. Go figure. Um, but uh, we got it done. The trailer is there. We're now headed over across town to load it up, charged up to 100% before uh, left the house. Again, I'm expecting our our rates, our watt rate, wattage rating to be pretty poor, but we're just gonna see how it goes. Um, so right now we are driving, we have a trailer. Don't ask me how to back it up. No idea how many times I'm gonna have to charge. Unlike a lot of my videos where I try to exude confidence and teach you on how to do something, you're gonna just see it in real time how I learn this stuff. So here we go, let's go get loaded up. Well, we're all loaded up with the trailer. And just for reference, for those of you watching, I have the U-Haul 4x8 enclosed trailer. It is the smallest enclosed trailer you can get. We got all our stuff in it. Um, it is literally 100 degrees outside, as you can tell. I've lost about five pounds just loading this thing. But uh, let's take a look at uh, what this route is going to look like because today we're going to get, it's about a little after one, we're going to try to get to uh, somewhere in eastern Nebraska. So we're going to go to York tonight and it says that we can drive to Des Moines and get there with 35%. That is not true because right now the car does not know we're towing something and hasn't picked up on it. So we are going to force it based on a little better route planning. Um, we're going to go to Grinnell first. So we're going to go to Grinnell and then we are then going to make our way west and hopefully the car will kick in and figure out what the efficiency is and give us some better predictions on how much we need to charge. But for now, let's get on the road. All right, we're on the highway pulling the U-Haul. You can see it here behind me. My wife is driving and we're trying to figure out how fast we can drive and get away with it. A lot of my best case calculations in a, route, a better route planner was that uh, I was shooting for 450 watt hours per mile and in a Model Y we get closer to 300, 310 and I was really hopeful I could keep it down that low. The last five miles we've been doing about 430 but we're doing 65 miles per hour and the speed limit's 70 and it only gets uh, faster from here on out. We're just going to kind of 
play it by ear, play it a little safer uh, between here and our first leg until the car starts to figure out how far it can go on a charge pulling this large load in the back. So we'll check it at Grinnell. actually going to have us sit and charge for 50 minutes so we can skip Des Moines and go to Shelby. We aren't going to sit here for 50 minutes. That's just going to be a waste of time. So I think we're going to see, let's just see West Des Moines, see what that's like. Let's go ahead and add that as a stop. All right, it says we only have to charge for five minutes. We'll probably charge a little bit more than that because I don't know that we've kicked in yet, although it seems to be tracking really well at the moment as far as predictions, but uh, until we kind of get this whole trailer thing under our belt, we're going to be cautious. Unfortunately, we're going to have to get unhooked. Uh, this last leg since it charged 92 miles, 463 watt hours per mile. Started the trailer trip here a little bit late, um, but uh, that's when we got the interstate 474. So, not quite where we want to be. Arrived at 41%. When we originally left, it said 44. So, it actually wasn't too bad in prediction given that this is our first stop. But we're going to get this trailer unhooked and uh, get charging. So, we'll see how quickly I can do that. Got unhooked, got these chocks put behind the wheel to keep it from rolling away. Eight bucks on Amazon. All right, let's go get plugged in. Got plugged in. It's V3 here. We're pulling about 170 kilowatts at 44% or 41%. That's pretty good. Um, see how long it's telling us we need to charge here. So there's actually two minutes remaining. So. I'm going to go ahead and use the restroom and uh, says we're going to get to our destination with 14%. I want that to be higher until this kicks in. And uh, so we'll sit here for a second and then we'll uh, have to go hook back up and figure out how to do that again and get back on the road. So here's the question. How long do we charge? Um, we're sitting here with 66%. We have 60 miles to go, which is short by any measure, um, except with maybe a trailer. And it's saying that we're going to get there with currently 29%. Um, I think what I'm going to do is, um, since it's so short, when it gets to 30, um, we're going to unplug. We're going to get hooked back up and go use this as our second litmus test for range. Because it looked like it was starting to, the watt hours per mile were starting to creep up as we were um, getting a little further west here. So... Gets to 29%, we're going to unplug, which is going to be here in just a second, and we're going to get hooked up and down to our next stop, and we just hit 30%, so let's get on down the road. Efficiencies right now are running a little bit better. We've been running 67 miles an hour in that first leg and I've been kind of slowly bumping them up and I was running there for a while, 72, um, 73. Uh, but since the speed limit changed to 65, we're back down to five over, which is the normal pace that we would take. So we should be there in about 20 minutes and by looking at the nav, 
now that this version shows pictures of the superchargers, it does appear that there is a pull in stop. Let's just cross our fingers that uh, it'll be free and we can pull into it because I'd rather not have to unplug this trailer if I don't have to. So, see you in Des Moines. Made it to West Des Moines. You can see that we got a pull-in spot. Person that was just sitting here, don't know what's going on, but they noticed that we had a trailer, so they left, which was, I guess, the nice thing to do. So we don't have to unhook, although the trailer is hanging out quite a bit, but I guess we'll just deal with that. Um, so we're here charging, and uh, we're gonna be here for a few minutes. Let's check out how that last leg did. We're gonna arrive at 30%. We actually got here about 34%. We're pulling 148 kilowatts. This is a V2. Last leg of the trip was only 61 miles, and we averaged 400 watt hours per mile, which is 50 under my goal. So it says that we're gonna be here for about 10 minutes before we can get on to Shelby, which right now says minus 9%. So we'll check in here when uh, we get a little more charge in us. We're all charged up, um, actually overcharged. We're still playing the conservative game, um, waiting for it to get to our destination, which is Shelby, Iowa, which is about 87 miles from here, waiting for it to get to 25%. I know, I know I don't need 25%, but again, we're new at this trailer thing and we're being a little conservative, so we're okay. We're still charging at 80 kilowatts. I don't usually like trying to charge the car when it drops below 100 kilowatts. It's just kind of my mental cutoff, but um, we're at 25% now at destination, 69% overall. So we're going to get unplugged and try and back this trailer out, um, which should be interesting. Um, first time backing up a trailer in my life, but I think I'll figure it out. If not, we're going to be here a while. pulled into Shelby, Iowa. Fortunately, the supercharger is empty and they have a pull-in spot for the trailer. We are at it to V2. We're charging at 140 kilowatts right now. It says we're going to be here for about 20 minutes, although I think we're going to charge a little longer because when we left West Des Moines, we left with an additional buffer of a rival at 25%. We actually went down from there and arrived with 15%, about halfway of the journey it dropped. Um, but the overall distance this leg, 88 miles, 453 watt hours per mile, which is right on my target, but for whatever reason, the estimation for arrival was way off. So I think it's still trying to sort itself out. So right now it's saying 20 minutes, but we'll probably end up charging longer just to give ourselves that buffer and we have to eat. So um, we're at a shell station. This is by far our favorite stop on this trip because it's just got everything. It's got a place to use the restroom. It's got some food and it's got a really nice walking path right next to the supercharger. Um, so we just like this spot and uh, we're going to be here for a little while, eat dinner, and then we'll uh, get unplugged and down the road. Okay, we are all charged up to where we think we need to be. We've given ourselves a 30% buffer to get to Lincoln. It is um, a little bit longer of a leg comparatively. Um, we're at 79%. We're going to get unplugged here. Um, if things do go sideways or we get a large headwind or whatever, we do have the... Um, 
charger in the Council Bluffs, Iowa area that we could bop into, but we really would prefer to skip this. So if we can get all the way to Lincoln, that would be great. So getting unplugged now. So a little weird thing happened. We just left Shelby, Iowa. Um, we left with a 30% buffer, actually 31% buffer. But the nav was doing something weird. It wasn't giving us turn-by-turn -turn directions. So we just did a quick edit and then done and had it recalculate. And we're only six miles away from the supercharger. And when it recalculated, that 30% dropped to 18%. It's kind of a big drop. So we're gonna have to keep an eye on that. If it stays 18% by the time we get to uh, the Council Bluff supercharger, we'll probably just keep on going. But uh, if it continues to drop, we'll be stopping in Council Bluffs, which I hope we can avoid. So I guess you'll find out what happens here in a second. Nebraska and you're going straight there's not a lot to do well when you have tow mode one of the things that I learned was that autopilot doesn't work you can use adaptive cruise control but no autopilot but still you have time to think and mess around and experiment so I've been running at 67 miles an hour the speed limit here is 75 we're coming into Lincoln Nebraska we're doing okay so I thought let me kick it up five miles an hour and see what happens the difference in consumption was a lot, actually. I mean, it went from about 400, 474 right now this trip, and it went well up over 600 and stayed there. That is a tremendous difference in power consumption, and just for only five miles an hour, I don't think it's worth it. All right, gotta get the stair to straight road again. We are at the new V3 supercharger in Lincoln, Nebraska. There are eight stalls, there are no pull-ins, but there is no one here at the moment, so we just pulled in sideways. We are technically blocking one, probably two spots, um, but since no one's here, I think we'll be okay. So how did that leg go? Well, let's check with the stats. First off, I reported that the car decided to jump from 31% to 18%. We actually got here with about 19, 20%. We've been charging just for a minute. You can see we're V3 here, we're charging at 230 kilowatts. That's gonna start dropping here pretty quick. But this last leg was 94 miles. This was our longest leg yet, uh, 461 watt hours per mile. A Little higher than our target, but we will take it. Not sure what happened with the nav, but uh, once it seemed to recalculate, it was doing its own thing. So we have to be here for 20 minutes. Um, this particular supercharger is at a Runza. So we're gonna go use the restroom and uh, check back with you when we're done. We're all charged up. We're actually charged to 92%. This is our last stop for the night. Um, we either gonna sit here or we're gonna sit at the hotel. So we might as well sit here and charge up as much as we can because I don't know it's gonna be warm tomorrow, it was 90s today. Right now it's even, you know, it's 8.30 at night, it's 94 degrees, so it's still super hot, but battery is still probably gonna be less than optimal, and we've got a short journey from where we're stopping in York to the next supercharger, because this stop is about halfway in between. So we, it says we're gonna to get to the hotel with 59%, and then beyond that without charging to Grand Island with 31%, but we've seen that before. Um, this time I had it manually recalculate, it's coming up with the same number, so cross my fingers I hope it's right so we're gonna get unplugged and we're gonna get to the hotel
just rolled in to our hotel for the night in York, Nebraska. It is a Hampton Inn. Um, we're not done with this leg, but uh, ending the night, we just did the last leg from Lincoln, which was just 47 miles, 461 watt hours per mile. Checking in for the total trip so far today, 373 miles, averaging 452 watts per mile. Um, my target was 450. Thanks, EV Dave, uh, for his test a while back that was right around that same number. But let me tell you, speeding up from 67 to 73 makes a tremendous difference in range loss, going from 450 to well over 600. So you're pulling a big metal box behind you and it's not very aerodynamic and it makes a huge difference. So going slower definitely helps. We are going to turn sentry mode off for the night and just let the car sit and not check the app. So when we wake up in the morning, we're sitting here at 63%, we should have 63%. Morning, day two of our trip. It's a little after seven, we need to hit the road because we have a deadline of getting to the Denver area before an office closes for the storage unit we're trying to put all this stuff into. So we gotta get to Grand Island, which is, should be a short trip, about 35 minutes. And uh, we'll check in from there and I'll give you an update on our overall trip for the day. And as I said last night, we got in at 62%. Turn off sentry mode, don't check the app. Woke up 62%, but the battery is cold, so you're gonna have a little more energy draw. We'll see if that happens over the next 30 miles, but for now, let's get on the road. Just like that, we are in Grand Island, Nebraska. Since the hotel, 43 miles, 496 watt hours per mile. As expected, it was higher. It was preconditioning on the drive in, even though it is 77 degrees outside. But since Lincoln, Nebraska, which is where we charged last, it was 89 miles, 478 watt hours per mile. And that higher average is entirely due to this last leg. So let's take a quick look at what today is going to look like. All right, let's take a look at what we have going on today. We are here in Grand Island, Nebraska. We gotta make our way over here to the Denver area. Now, according to the NAV, we're only gonna stop three times before getting to our destination. But according to a better route planner, we need to stop a lot more. So I am not sure that we're gonna be able to make this leg between Ogallala and Brush. That's about 130 miles. We may need to scoot over to this supercharger here in Sydney, but we'll just kind of play this by ear. But right now it wants us to skip Kearney and go all the way to Gothenburg, which I think we're gonna stay here and charge for the 15 minutes to do that because definitely if we have to stop in Kearney, we're going to have to unplug, which I would prefer to avoid. So I guess what we could do is we're gonna sit here until we see Gothenburg with about 20% uh, arrival, state of charge, and then um, I guess if things go sideways on the road, we can always stop at Kearney as a bailout point. So we're here. We're 140 kilowatts charging and uh, says we're going to be here for 15 minutes. So stick around here and we'll hit the road as soon as we can. We are almost charged up, charging at a relatively slow rate of 58 kilowatts. We're at 80% on the battery. However, we're at 18% arrival state of charge. Um, Nebraska is notorious for high winds. We don't really know how it's gonna to go today. So I'm gonna wait till this gets to 20. And if this is a big problem, then we have a bailout point in Kearney. So just a few more minutes and then we'll be on our way.
asking to see who Mrs. Iowa Tesla guy is, and I can finally show you. There she is. We are in Gothenburg, Nebraska. It is near a Comfort Suites hotel, and um, we ended up pulling in sideways so we don't have to unhook. I'm kind of okay with that. We're taking up about half the spots, which isn't great, but there's nobody here, so I think we'll be okay for now. Um, if it becomes a problem, we'll we'll deal with it. But uh, for now, we are here. We are charging, charging up enough to get us to Ogallala, hopefully. This last leg was 102 miles, slightly more than our last longest leg. We averaged 489 watt hours per mile. Um, we were kind of playing around with the speed limit. Um, we were kind of going between 65 and 70, depending. Um, when we started out at 67, we were either going uphill or something, but our, our watt hour rate was well in the 500, so we backed it off and then things seemed to settle down, so we increased a little bit more. So this overall leg ended up being 489. So we're plugged in. We're all charged up, probably overcharged, but um, we're projecting 24% arrival at um, Ogallala. Um, we're currently sitting at 83%. So we're gonna get unplugged and back out and uh, get on the road and we'll check in with you in Ogallala, hopefully, so that everything goes well. to Ogallala, Nebraska. Now this is an interesting supercharger because you can actually drive behind the superchargers, which is awesome because we were able to take the trailer and just drive behind and find an open spot and plug in. Um, it's at a hotel. Um, there is a McDonald's, a little bit of a walk away. There's not a lot here. It's a V2 charger, but it, it really isn't bad. And when you're pulling a trailer, this is an ideal spot because there's actually enough room on this supercharger to probably have at least two trailers or two cars with trailers parked behind. So I like this spot. It seems to work out really well. So let's check out what the uh, efficiency was on that last leg. All right, I actually had to move forward and unplug, so I lost my data on the screen. But according to my app, we did about 86 miles and our watt average was about 580, which is substantially higher than what we've been running. And that's because I was driving a lot faster. I was actually driving the speed limit of 75. Um, was watching the destination. When we left, it said we get here with 20%. We started going at our normal 67 miles an hour. It started climbing. So I was just kind of playing with that number and increasing the speed uh, until I kind of got it dialed in. And so we, we got here with about 19%. Probably could have sped up a little bit more, but um, figure that we'll get here a little bit quicker. Now, what I don't know is obviously if I got here quicker and I burn more energy, I'm going to have to charge longer to get where I need to go. So what's the benefit? Is it better to get here a little quicker or does can I replenish that energy faster than it took me to get here? And I, I really don't know. If you uh, have any insight on that, leave some comments in the description below. But for now, we are plugged in. We're getting 145 kilowatts Says we got 15 minutes, but it is lunchtime. So we're likely going to overcharge. We are all charged up here at Ogallala, 78%. Says we're going to get there with 27. We knew we would overcharge a little bit. It is only 67 miles to our next stop, which will be Sydney, Nebraska. But uh, we did get some lunch, so we're getting back on the road. <laughs> Hello 
from Sydney, Nebraska, our next stop, which is a bit of a detour. Normally we go from Ogallala directly to Brush, but that's about 130 miles and the wind in the Colorado can be unpredictable. So it's a little further out of our comfort zone um, and going here to Sydney really only adds about 10 minutes and we were gonna have to sit and charge for much longer in Ogallala. So I think it's about a wash. This last leg, 68 miles, 518 watt hours per mile. It was higher than what we've been doing. It's because I was going 80 miles an hour instead of 67. Um, I think the car is starting to get a feel for what it takes to pull this thing. And when it's giving us a predicted uh, arrival time, especially when we're giving that 25% buffer that we needed from earlier, um, we're finding that we may not need it anymore. So um, I'm utilizing that extra buffer to drive faster and get us to our destination quicker. Uh, Sydney has a pull in. Um, if you're keeping track, um, we've only had to unhook one time and that was our very first charge. And based on what I can tell, we're not gonna have to unhook anymore, which is really cool. So trailering in a Tesla doesn't have to be that inconvenient. So. We're going to sit here for a little while and get charged, probably about 15 minutes, use the restroom, get a drink, and uh, then we'll be on our way to Brush. We'll check in when we're about ready to leave. We are all charged up to 74%, 78 miles. Says uh, we're going to get there with 23%. Based on how things have been settling in, we probably will beat that um, or we'll drive faster. But uh, we'll check in when we get to Brush, Colorado. <laughs> Bit of a cross-country trip um, from Sydney to here. I actually wouldn't recommend it. The uh, roads were horrible. But we are now in Brush, Colorado. It is a older V2 supercharger, but it also has a pull-in for a trailer. So once again, we are looking good. So we're again here with about 20%. We got here with about 20%. And um, we were driving relatively fast when we could, although some of those back roads weren't very nice. Uh, 77 miles that last leg, 504 watt hours per mile. Our overall uh, average is 481 now. So since we have 40 minutes, not sure I believe that, but uh, we'll figure out next stops here in a second. All right, so we're sitting here on the pull stall, but it's actually a shared stall with the guy next to me. And he, there's plenty of other stalls open, but this guy who was here before me, must be okay with the charge rate, um, but I am not. I don't want to sit here for another 30 minutes because we're still at 36%. And we're only charging at 75 kilowatts. I know I can get more of that. So I think I could finagle in down on the last one. So let me see if I can do that. We're all charged up. 80% says we're going to get there with 27. We um, were watching a little Netflix. Time got away from us for just a little bit. But uh, says we have 81 miles before making it to our mostly final destination where we get to unload a lot of this stuff so we'll check in when we get there for now let's get unplugged to our final stop for the day we got to the storage unit we unloaded our stuff we are at the supercharger that is nearby we rolled in with about 16 percent that last leg 85 miles 537 watt hours per mile pulling the trailer because this trip went on our confidence level increased and the car actually started to kind of sink in with what the true 
energy consumption was going to be dragging this trailer. So we're going to end this video here. This is our cross country trip. We had a total of 833 miles and we averaged 487 watt hours per mile on this trip. I was hoping to be around 450. We weren't that far off. Um, 800 miles. It's definitely doable in a Tesla. Just takes a little bit of planning, but a Tesla is definitely doable for pulling a trailer. Is it probably the best solution for pulling a trailer? No. Um, I would still say a gas car is probably still the best solution just because the energy efficiency in your Tesla drops like a rock when you're pulling something that is basically a big box behind it that's not very aerodynamic. However, if you're an all electric family like we are, then you just don't have a choice, you gotta do it, and you definitely can do it. So if you have a Tesla and you're thinking about towing something cross country, go for it. If you don't have a Tesla and you're thinking about picking one up and this somehow inspired you to order one of your own, make sure you use a referral link when ordering that Tesla to save up to $1,000 on your purchase. So make sure you use one of those. You can use any referral link, but if you wanna use mine, I'll leave one in the description. It's greatly appreciated. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, I'd appreciate you hitting that like button. And if you're new to the channel, please consider subscribing. Thanks so much for watching and we'll catch you on the next road trip.